Good morning, everyone. We've had another cold snap. It's uh, around 20 degrees Fahrenheit here. Um, I'm in, in, in southern Indiana. Uh, thankfully, all of our 10 little piglets made it through the cold night, which is awesome. Very grateful for that. <laughs> um, mama's a good mama. Um, I really kind of wanted to echo what my video was yesterday, which was choosing whether you're going to be in a fear state about all the noise and stuff going on in the outside world, or if you can look at it as awareness. And it's really not just semantics. It's really, there's a difference between fear and awareness. And generally, when I'm in awareness, it leads me to go back within and not focus on the outside world. And Fear can be is usually a future now moment. Rarely, I find, is fear right here, right now. Um, there may be a few instances, like if somebody was breaking into your house, um, getting chased by an animal, bit by an animal, things like that. But generally, fear is in our mind. It never comes to pass. And... It's some future now moment that we don't need to worry about. And when we are in that state of fear and worry and anxiety, it shifts us out of ourselves into all that noise. And so when we're in that fear state, we're really giving ourselves up to that fear. And it's a hard process to break down and go through and instead look within, look at this moment and say, I have nothing to be afraid of in this moment. I can be aware of everything. I know there are consequences going on for everything, but what can I do now? Do I need to worry about it now? And your answer may be, yes, I need, there's something immediate. I need to worry about water right now. I need to worry about the ground, the air. It, it just depends on where you're at. And you might go, well, I really don't need to, like, I'm doing everything I can. And some of these things are out of my control. And so you need to decide, are you going to stress about things that you cannot control or are you just going to say I know I am going to have the best outcome for my life on what I'm trying to do here and then you're releasing that fear and you're coming back within because you're trusting you you're trusting the plan that you created for you coming here and there's always free will at play so you can still go off into fear and you could be straddling and you might be perfectly right here in this now moment. I also talked a little bit of yesterday about our power and how powerful we are and how much I feel like that's really hidden from us. And I think that's on purpose. Um, if we know how powerful we are real change happens. We see in movies and TV shows and books things like magic and go, oh, I wish I could um, I wish I could do that. See telekinesis in uh, Matilda. My girls were watching that last night. And Is, you know, 
why aren't we encouraged in those gifts? Do we really think the, that stories about that just happened and people really don't have those gifts? Do we think that they just are only for certain people? Or may there be a bigger thing? What if we all had that power and we just don't know it? <clears throat> when I'm looking at things now, and I had um, some big synchronizations yesterday, <clears throat> just in different conversations, different videos I was listening to and watching um, as I was running errands. That's kind of my time to catch up on stuff, generally, other than coming out and doing chores <clears throat> and synchronizations to me is the universe telling me or God or source creator telling me I am on the right track everything just keeps syncing up lining up and some people would call those coincidences and things like that and oh it's just a coincidence how many times does it need to happen before you believe in it before you see that it's pushing you along this path you're on the right path <clears throat> and I made my video yesterday without having caught up on uh, some of Lori Ladd's videos I really like her she's very inspirational to me um, and she's really gotten me to dig deep and go within myself I think all the best teachers teach you to go within they don't have the answers they just show you kind of how to go within there's but a difference between that and saying this is what you need to do this is what you need to follow <clears throat> and uh, she talked about in one of her videos yesterday being okay with where, where we're at right now our air is being poisoned, our food's being poisoned, our water's being poisoned, our ground's being poisoned. And sometimes in the system that we are in, we can't go out and buy the best food that's the purest it can possibly be. <clears throat> we might not be able to grow all of our own food. We might not be able to buy organic food for our animals that we know we'll be consuming and we have to get to a point where I see that I acknowledge that but can I look at what I'm doing without judgment can I look at myself with compassion and love and understanding and one of the things that that triggered in me was to say, okay, before I'm eating now, I'm going to acknowledge there may, this food may not be have been prepared in happiness. It has touched probably many hands to get to me. It may not be the best for me. I acknowledge that. I'm grateful for it. And I ask that only the good parts of this nurture this body and anything that is lacking just goes away the question is do you think you're powerful enough to do that to transmute that I don't know if you think you're powerful enough to do that I know I'm going to do it because what is it going to hurt Maybe it won't work. What if it does? I've had a really hard time with food probably my entire life. It's been kind of a comforting friend that has made me feel control and out of control at the same time. And I've really tried hard over the last year to not look at my choices in food with judgment and lack. And that's hard. <clears throat> I, I've been on diets for 
a very long time and food has always been an enemy <laughs> as well as a friend and making this transition to thinking I am this powerful that I am going to choose what I'm consuming, what I can afford to buy, acknowledging that there may be flaws and faults with it, and yet I know it can still nourish and keep this body. And there may be a future now moment that I make better choices or whatever, but in this moment I know exactly where I'm at and I'm going to choose to look at myself with compassion and love and kindness and know I'm doing what I need to do right now in this moment for this body. And so I think if we start to approach all of these outside noise things that we really can't control. I can't control chemtrail spraying all over my land and stuff like that. There's some things I might be able to do to mitigate it, but really at the end of the day, I can't do anything about it. But I can look at the food that I grow and that I put in my mouth and say, I know this food was grown with love and kindness and pure intention. And I ask that I receive those things from this food. And anything that was put into this food that I don't, that I didn't intend, that I'm aware of is out there, I ask that it just passes through this body and doesn't harm it. And I think we are powerful enough to do that. And I think our, that sort of power is hidden from us. Our words are powerful. Our intentions are powerful. So if you're in a fear state and you're going, how do I even get to an inner me state where I'm not constantly in fear? Maybe it's shifting how you're talking to yourself, where you feel your power is. If you're in fear, you're giving your power away. If you're saying and intending things, you're coming back into you. It's, it's really a profound thought that we could be that powerful. And I really think we are. <laughs> So I guess the challenge would be, can you do that? Do you want to do that? Do you think it's a bunch of hoopla? Do you think maybe, hey, maybe she's onto something. Maybe there is something being kept from us about how amazing and powerful we are. And all these distractions are to completely pull us out of that power continually. And we have a choice in each and every now moment to get pulled out or to stay right here. Again, awareness doesn't mean you don't see the show. You see all of it. You're just not choosing to participate and be on the stage. You're in the audience. And you're watching it. It's a very different feeling from being in an actual show. If you're a performer participating in all of this craziness, <clears throat> all of this fear state, versus being in an audience watching a performance. Can you believe you're that powerful? Can you know you are that powerful? And start to look for those synchronizations where I was just talking to somebody about that. And then I was talking to somebody else about the same thing. And it's all clicking together. It's all stepping together. It's really amazing. And that's when I know I'm in flow state. That's when I know I'm really on my right path. And 
if I'm not feeling and seeing those things, then I go, hmm, what's going on? And maybe nothing is. But it never hurts to go look within and go, hmm. <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful day, a good weekend. I don't know if I'll be doing a video tomorrow or not, but I hope you have a spectacular weekend. Enjoy yourself and those around you.